What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email. That's right here. But right now, you are tuned in to another episode of The Rundown, where I just give you my very brief opinion on some of the albums and songs that I didn't have time to give full reviews to. So, my overall idea here is just to tell you what I think, to start the discussion, and obviously, we gotta start off talking about Kendrick Lamar's track, Humble. When this shit came out, the internet went nuts as expected, but I gotta be honest with you, man, I really wasn't feeling this track too much, and this is coming from someone who's got a lot of love for Kendrick and is rated to Pimp a Butterfly a 5 out of 5. That's actually the only project to get that high score. And the reason I didn't care for this one too much is because of that Mike Will made it production, the little piano and the synth hits that come in and out don't really do too much for me, like it is a bit of a banger, but not one of those bangers that gave me the screw face and made me lean back. And although Kendrick is coming with these really nice flows, as you would expect, as well as some fun little ad-libs, he's not really saying too much in this track. Although, just to be clear, we all know that he's going with a more fun and light-hearted approach here. And while some people were upset by that, I really didn't mind, because Kendrick has done these types of tracks before. He did just give us to Pimp a Butterfly, so I don't expect him to always come with that type of sound, and I like how he's been known to switch it up. Now, I also need to say, even though I don't like this track very much, it still has me excited to check out his album, because when To Pimp a Butterfly had that I single come out, I didn't care much for it either, but then I heard the album, and it kind of made more sense in the context of it, and it was also a live version, so I liked it better. And, you know, this isn't one of those songs I think is awful, but it really isn't a track that I'm going to go out of my way to listen to. Now, content-wise, people are saying that he's taken some shots, like this is a bit of a parody on the state of the rap game. They're saying that he's calling out Big Sean on the hook with that hole up Lil Bitch shit, as if he's just sort of mocking Big Sean's ad-libs. And some people were even saying he was poking fun at Lil Uzi over some of his A ad-libs on here. But I gotta be honest with you, man. I feel like people are really reaching with some of this shit unless Kendrick tells us otherwise or starts dropping names because some of these subliminals just seem so subliminal that people are just making it out to be more than it is. So I don't know about all that. Maybe it will make more sense when we hear the rest of the album and you know he did take some shots it seemed at Big Sean on the heart part four those ones were still subliminal but they made a bit more sense than what people are saying about this one but the main couple of bars that people are going crazy about on this track are those ones where he says that he's sick and tired of the damn Photoshop ladies he just wants to see something natural like the stretch marks and the afros so I don't know why people got so mad about that to me I thought he was just stating his preferences but you know how it is nowadays, man. You say some shit and people go absolutely bananas and they're just like, he's a witch, burn him, burn him. How could he say this about women? Oh my God. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a feminist or a lady. Maybe I'm way off base. I don't know. You guys can hit me up in the comment section with what you think, but I think he was just talking about a preference and saying what he likes, which doesn't automatically mean he hates everything else and thinks everything else is worse. And maybe he just prefers that, but once in a while he likes his lady to be done up. I don't know. He's just saying kind of how he feels. Now, I do like the video to this too. I have to talk about that very quickly because you're getting a lot of religious imagery. It's very iconic. And that's cool because it ties into this whole idea of being humble. It's like almost juxtaposing and parodying itself because he's saying to be humble, but then in the video he's dressed in like these pope vestments i guess that's maybe what you would call it or i think someone said it was some christian orthodox vestments i don't know man i'm not a super religious person but you can tell this shit is religious it sort of depicts the last supper in some scenes as well so there are some things i like about this track but overall just straight up as a song i would give this a three out of five man i'm really not going to come back to this very much and a three out of five doesn't mean bad i'm just curious to see what the rest of that album is going to sound like and to see how this will tie in and next, we gotta talk about this Joey Badass track featuring Schoolboy Q called Rockabye Baby, because I thought this one was some fire, and I actually liked it more than Humble, so I thought that was interesting since these two albums are gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other this week, although Joey's album is actually leaked already, which is pretty crazy, because albums don't usually leak that far in advance, and I haven't checked it out yet, I'm gonna probably wait a little bit before I do. But anyway, I really like the production on this track, it just has this very grimy piano sound to it, some nice deep bass, and Schoolboy Q absolutely absolutely snapped, man. He ate this track alive. I did like Joey's verse because he's talking a bit about a revolution and, you know, he's getting political and saying fuck Trump, but at this point that shit is kind of getting a little bit played out. I mean, I understand why people are still saying it, but it's just like everybody is doing this type of thing, so it's not really as hard-hitting as maybe it was when people first started doing it, but I still appreciate that he's coming with that political content. However, Schoolboy Q really goes in much deeper. I just think his style really fits this production. It sounds like it could have been like a total school 
schoolboy Q track, and he has some bars on here that are dope. He has this line that says something about how black people went from being lynched in fields to owning buildings and influencing millions of white children. I just thought that was a very cool way of explaining how far black people have come. But then he also brings up how black people in America own very little of the wealth overall. So there's still some work to be done. And you know, I think it's just cool that Schoolboy Q was putting that sort of spin onto this track. It really fit nicely. The beat was dope. Loved the content, solid verses, and even the hook was catchy as well. So to me, this is a four out of five and a dope track. Now the third song that I want to talk about here is Logic Song Everybody, man. Just seems like everybody is dropping some tracks these days, so we've really been blessed as far as getting new music goes after this slow start to 2017. Now here, I think Logic is absolutely flowing his ass off, as you would expect, with that rapid double time speed. I think when he does that, he sounds really tight. But one thing I didn't care for on this track is the beat, because it's just this very simple vocal chop or vocal pad that goes on and on throughout it. It does have some deep bass, but there's just not much variation to it, man. I really felt like it could have used a little bit of seasoning on there, you know what I mean? Really needed some more build-ups, breakdowns, or maybe even some instruments coming into play, because to me, it wasn't that great. Now the content on it does get kind of cool because he's just spitting about his own identity as a light-skinned biracial man who's been, you know, demonized from black people and white people. So he's just speaking on his experiences because he's in the middle and he's sort of seen both sides and has been critiqued from both sides, you know, from white people calling him a nigger and putting him down for being black, you know, for having a black father. And even on the other side where people say he's not black enough and whatever. But to be honest with you, this is something Logic has rapped about and talked about so much in his music that I didn't really find it that profound on the song because I've already heard him say that and this whole tragic mulatto trope slash cliche, whatever you want to call it, is just kind of played out in my opinion. I mean, I definitely understand it myself as someone who's mixed and light-skinned. I totally get where he's coming from. But on this song, it really just felt like he was kind of forcing it down our throats. I've heard him talk about this and rap about it many times again, like I said. So, you know what? Just like Humble, I think this is a good track. It's not really bad. I don't think you could say this is trash. But for me, it's a 3 out of 5. And that hook on here, I gotta say, I thought that was really bad. That shit was cheesier than Chester Cheetah's shits. Just that everybody bleed, everybody people, everybody need, or whatever it was exactly he was saying. I don't know, but I really didn't fuck with the cadence on that hook. I thought it was kind of corny. And if you didn't know, Kodak Black finally came out with this album called Painting Pictures, and I actually liked this a little bit more than I expected, although I still didn't really think of this as a great album. It definitely has some really nice production. Some of those beats on the first half are incredibly wavy, so if you just want something simple and basic to ride around with, you might be able to work with it. But listening to Kodak's mumbly, slurry flow as he spits about some pretty basic shit gets old pretty damn fast, especially over this hour-long album. Now, I will give him credit for getting a little bit introspective on some of these tracks where he talks about some of his legal troubles as, you know, he's had these sexual assault, rape charges, all that shit going on. I haven't really read about that too much, but I know a lot of people out there are saying he's a rapist and he's all fucked up. So he does talk a little bit about that, just some street narrative, maybe a little bit of street wisdom here and there. Nothing that deep because, I mean, it's just Kodak Black. So I do get his appeal in that aspect. He does have a little bit of content on here, but for the most part, he's not saying too much. And there are some god awful bars on this fucking thing, man. Oh my God. There's this line where he's talking about how he likes his pussy bald like Caillou. Why anyone would want to talk about pussy and compare it to that bald motherfucker who's just annoying and disrespectful and probably the worst kids show just damn near makes me sick. I don't want any pussy that has anything to do with Caillou. At least maybe pick someone who's lovable like fucking Snuffleupagus. So, although that would be kind of hairy and weird, the whole trunk big clit thing, maybe, I don't know, I'm getting off track, but god damn it, I'm just saying, fuck Caillou, that's basically what I'm getting at, and he has a couple other weird lines on here where he's saying that pussy is so wet like some chicken noodle soup, and of course, he's saying he's in it like some mac and cheese, so I guess the Kodak Black vagina is just something cheap that you get in the dollar aisle at the grocery store. I also got to bring up how Young Thug is really getting his Ice J.J. Fish on on the song Top Off Bends or Off Top Bends. I forget what it is. I'll scroll it across the bottom because I'm not going to go back and dig that shit up. So, you know, at the end of the day, to me, this is a 2.5 out of 5, man. Kind of average project. There might be a couple of songs you like on here if you don't want anything too serious. And like I said, some of the production is so damn wavy and smooth. I just wish I could take it from him and give it to someone else like a goddamn rap Robin Hood.
And very quickly, I just want to talk about this Jamiroquai album called Automaton. Obviously, this one isn't a rap, hip-hop project, so it's a little bit different. But you guys know that I fuck with the funk, so I wanted to show some love to this. I've actually been a fan of Jamiroquai for a little while. Not a huge fan, but you know, I like some of his old hits like Little L and Virtual Insanity, which is a damn classic, as well as Canned Heat. So he's known to bring just these very funky, danceable, EDM type of tracks, just mixing in that electronic vibe with some nice disco strings, groovy bass lines, and that very nice voice of his. So I definitely hear all of that on this project, especially the song Cloud Nine. This is actually the single, and it really sounds like his earlier work, like say from the late 90s, early 2000s. But you know what? I gotta be clear. Jamiroquai is a band. The lead singer is JK, and then there are some other people in it. It's just, I always call Jamiroquai Jamiroquai. I just consider it to be that one guy, because that's who you always see, and he was always talked about. But I wanted to clear that up very quickly and they're just a funk band that's out of the UK. So I would give this one a 3.5 out of 5. Just like with that Tuxedo album I talked about in the last rundown, this is just some shit for when you want something fun, funky, and light. I didn't like it as much as Tuxedo. I think Tuxedo was doing something a bit more interesting where they're doing that old school funk sound but kind of refreshing it and revitalizing it. Whereas Jamiroquai is sort of doing a similar thing to what they've done all along. Not to say that's bad, because if you like Jamiroquai, maybe that's what you want to hear. And this is their first album, I think, in about seven years. So I think this is a pretty cool project. Check it out if you want something that's just a bit different, something that's light, fun, and a little bit catchy as well. And lastly, we got to talk about this Lupe Fiasco track, Kneeling on Needles, because it is damn sure better than everything on Droga Slight. At least in my opinion, because I know some people said Droga Slight wasn't really that bad, but I thought that was a pretty brutal project, coming from anybody, especially Lupe Fiasco. But this right here is a nice wavy beat with some very smooth keys and deep bass, so I fuck with that 100%. And Lupe is really going into some nice bars here, because this is a bit of a dedication to Colin Kaepernick. That's why you see that cover art there with the 7 on it, and even on the start he talks a little bit about how he knew people were going to crucify him for what he was doing, because people were acting like Kaepernick took a shit on the Statue of Liberty. That's actually a line that Lupe says on here. I thought that was kind of funny. Just a good way of putting it, man, because I know I could get into this whole issue and make this whole discussion political. I don't want to do that too much, but all I'm going to say is people really got damn pissed off when he was kneeling and doing what he was doing, and they also tended to ignore the message he was bringing and all the good work he's done, because he's done a lot of charity work, he's donated a ton of money, he's helped out all the starvation going on in Somalia, so I commend him for actually going from protesting to doing that actual work because I think that's important but anyway back to this song I just thought it was really dope dope beat good bars I like the content and the idea behind it and he even kind of shouts out Kendrick for saying that he wants to see those stretch marks maybe not a shout out but he just mentions it so I guess this song was made quite recent as he's touching on that song humble which just came out And then he has a line that I think will really piss some people off because he says that he can't believe people still believe that Jesus is white. So I thought that was kind of funny. They just threw that out there. Lupe just stirring the pot a bit just on this whole track by showing love to Kaepernick and saying some shit like that. So I think this is a pretty dope track all around. I give it a four out of five. I think it's definitely better than everything on Drogas Light, as I said. So there we have it. Another episode of The Rundown is in the books. Make sure you hit me up in the comments section to let me know what you think about all these tracks and these albums. I'm always interested to hear and discuss with you guys and make sure you do all that good YouTube and social media stuff man where you like my videos you share them you follow me on Twitter you retweet the videos and of course man you got to subscribe to my channel and click like on that Facebook page thank you for watching everybody I will see you next time